Welcome to Wales, best of the west. And as part of this series, between me, Ollie and mine, we're going to take you to a couple of places across Wales. So tune in and see what the secrets are off the Welsh coast. After some great diving at Martins Haven, we arrived at the last site in the series, which is Stackpole Quay on the South Pembrokeshire coast. The small cove is surrounded by large cliffs and only a short walk from the popular beach of Barrafundal Bay. Like many shore dives along the coast, it's relatively shallow, reaching up to 10 metres in depth. However, heading further out, you can start to encounter some currents. You never know what species you'll encounter when diving across the range of habitats that the site offers. <laughs> Heading out of the bay you have the option of following the reef out to the west or going east to explore the golden sand in search of the many ambush species that can be found there. So heading out west from Stackpole Key, we'll take you along a boulder reef, which is also lined by nice sand. It's nice to have these two contrasting habitats, and again as well as two meet there you can find some predators hidden amongst the sand. And these could be small rays or other small invertebrates. So heading out of the bay, we'll take you to these large rock formations that look like fingers running out of the cliffs. And these gullies are good and they, they hide a lot of species. And this is where you tend to pick up a lot of the cat sharks and in some of the bullhurst too, which are the larger cat shark species. Spotted cat sharks and they're just resting on the sand. You can see when you get close to them how they pump water over their gills, unlike other shark species that are found in the open ocean. So you can see how behind the eyes they have the spiracles. These allow water to be pumped over the gills, unlike the larger pelagic shark species. So these are one of the most common shark species that we get off the Welsh coast. This is an adult. And hopefully if you're going to look around the reefs you may have laid some mermaid purses because these are egg bearing sharks. These don't give birth to live pups like other shark species. Instead they lay these egg cases also known as mermaid purses on the reef where after some time they'll hatch and they'll just be miniature version of this. It's amazing they have a superb coloration across their body and they get completely non-threatening to people. They just get on with their daily life. Slightly more challenging conditions today, but we'll get down to deep water and see if we can find a little more shelter from the reef, a bit more better visibility because at the moment it's not the best. But as we get below two meters, you can feel the swell just disappear. Heading out to the finger galleys, heading into the deeper water see if we can find any more species that we would like to see. So they're just coming across the sand on the reef on the edge here. We come across this mermaid's purse, which isn't from a, a cat shark, but actually it's from a skate, which possibly is one of the many skate species that are found off the Welsh coast. But you can see that they're born from these casings. Just mini versions of what they look like as adults. You know, it's really cool to find one. Maybe if this has here, the baby's around somewhere. And maybe it might be one we can find later tonight, as we're a bit easier to spot at night. So here's some less inspired cat shark egg cases. And you can see they've been attached to the seaweed here by a little string, and they help to attach it to the base. So 
there's a small embryo inside that's partially developed and hopefully we can find a few more across the site which are a bit more developed. So let's see if we can all find a few more of the egg cases looking for the lesser spotted cat shark ones that's a bit smaller. More likely to find these on the reef itself. Lesser spotted cat shark egg case. If you look closely, you can just make out the embryo of a small lesser spotted cat shark. It's great to see that this was probably only a couple of days or a few weeks away to hatch into a small lesser spotted cat shark. And once this is hatched, it's out here on the reef, all independent by itself, as to fend for itself until it grows up into a large adult. on top of it. It's the most perfect camouflage amongst the reef. And one of the most distinguishing things about this crab species are the pink claws it's got. And it's a remarkable form of camouflage. When two species live side by side and both help each other out, there's a symbiotic relationship they've got between them. It's the biggest one I've ever seen. In the past, when we have been diving stack pole, we see a few smaller ones, but this is one's quite big size. This one's got his own little capped off with a big boring sponge. It looks like he's being harassed a little bit by a velvet swimming crab. Well, an interesting crab species, but a remarkable way of coming actually banking and getting. Very few times that people get to see them, especially this close in as an anglerfish, also known as a monkfish too. You can see how well camouflaged it is on the reef. And to really look carefully to find it, we just, just came across it. It's really good size. Looking closely at the head, you can see how they use this modified dorsal fin as a mirror to attract any potential prey to come closer where they used this large mouth to then suck the prey in and backward facing teeth freeze. Once the prey is in, it's not coming out anytime soon. Oh, it's fantastic to see one up close, usually found in deep water. It's, yeah, it's not a species that's common anywhere along the lookout coast really, unless you go quite far out. So we're really fortunate to see this one. This settles a little bit more for this evening. We can get out doing night dive. And also the hope for the swell disappears. We'll make it a lot easier to find a few more things, especially on the side itself. After waiting for darkness, we kitted up again and headed back into the water, excited to find some different species that come out of hiding at night.
So instead of going to the west and over the reefs and over the boulders and gullies where we went this afternoon, we're heading east. We're going to head over onto the more spine sand and hopefully we can find some of the creatures that would come out at night and hug on these sandy habitats. Just before getting to the sand, we're still going over this really nice reef and coming across this little spot of cat shark, which is looking through the galleys, seeing whether they can find any prey. It's quite a large cat shark. But they're more active at night when they're hunting and they can go into the small gullies and crevices to catch a range of crustaceans or fish species that they prey on. A few more less spotted cat sharks right along the reef. It's quite busy on here tonight. Back in the seagrass in Portland, we didn't have much luck using the UV lights on cat sharks, so we thought we'd try it again here in Stackpole. As you can see, we had far more success and got some awesome results, with cat sharks glowing under the UV light. What we noticed was the UV seemed to work much better on juveniles than the adults, and it's incredible to see a shark glow under the UV and they're just one of many species globally that do. There's another nighttime wanderer, the lobster. A lot more active at night, you can see them wandering around outside their burrows. As we leave the reef, we go onto this nice fine sun. Hopefully, we can find some rays. There must be some juveniles around, but they're well camouflaged. Lots of predators here, just laying low and waiting for something to pass. And they'll ambush it, which is a common technique in a place like this, where it's just plain sun. Many are just sit and wait predators. one of the top predators I found on this short series of barren habitat is the necklace shell. You can see the noticeable with a large mantle. Surprise! We've got a juvenile block bream. Unlike when they grow up, they're quite golden when they're small, and as they go to adult, they turn to a grey black coloration. And often not very seen whilst diving, so it's a great little surprise to see one here, especially the juveniles, who tend to be quite flighty. This is really good. So there's a baby girded. This can grow quite big, over 50 centimeters down to large adults. But they're quite distinct on their pectoral fins where they have a bright neon blue coloration. It really is quite striking. They also have modified fins on the front that allow them to walk above the sand. See if we're lucky to find some of these small rays. Yes, we got one. We got a little ray. So I managed to come across a small eyed ray. So you can see it here just burying and going over the sand and hunting some food. You can see how he just moves across the sand effortlessly with his enlarged pectoral fins. 
That's a great old guy. Really excited to get to see one. We got it. Really nice to see. You can see how they're perfectly camouflaged to hunting in the sandy environment. So you can bury itself quite easily and quite successfully below the sand with those large fins. Let's see if we can follow it for a bit whilst it hunts. I'll give a tiny invertebrate that I found across the sand. Really going for a hunt this evening. You see how they move using those undulations across their large pectoral fins. Great, really small. Right, they can grow up to quite big sizes. Let's see if we can just watch this one swim around for a bit. Really good to see. What we call more like traditional sharks, which are larger ones like dogfish and taupe that's found off the West Coast. Razor skates don't have rows of teeth, but instead they have two plates that they use to crush their food. Now after that one, hopefully, we've had a few more just to top off this evening's dive. Where's Lloyd now? And again, there's another one. This one's slightly bigger than the other one. But still only a juvenile. Even though they're quite a small species already, they can still grow easily double the size of this. We really, really wanted to find one, and you can see it just scooting off in the background, and it really tops off the last dive, really towing up all four sites, and really great to finally get a little ray in. I've done an amazing last dive. Unfortunately, to see two small eyed rays, good, and even some juvenile blood bream. Great way to end a series of dives. And each side certainly didn't disappoint. Hopefully we can be a little more about the wonders I found on the Welsh coast, part of Wales, best of the West. Throughout the series we had some awesome encounters and a huge diverse range of marine life. Showcasing the incredible diversity that is found off the Welsh coast, of which all that can be seen from the shore and at locations that are easily accessible. Head out to explore the marine life found at these sites in Porth Escadan, Porth Mynchain, Martinshaven, Stackpole or discover your own at your local site and see what wonders are found below the waves of the Welsh coast. You'll never know what incredible encounter could occur.